Today we are going to start chapter 7 and do sections 7 1 and 7 2. We're going to be talking about ratios to start with. So remember, ratios can be written as words, one thing to another thing. They can be written with colons, a number, a colon, and then another number. Or they can be written as fractions, which is the way we will use ratios most of the time in geometry. Extended ratios are comparing three or more quantities. Normally we say see ratios as a comparison of two things, but ratios can be a comparison of three or more things also. When that's the case, a fraction doesn't work, and we would have to use colons, such as A colon B colon C, or this 2 colon 2 colon 3. A proportion is a set of two equal ratios. When we write proportions, we'll write our ratios as fractions. I can take two equivalent fractions and set them equal to each other to make a proportion. It's very important to remember that a proportion must be made of two equal ratios. If you have two ratios that are not equal to each other, you cannot make them into a proportion and use a proportion to solve. When you use a proportion to solve, usually one of these four quantities is missing. And the cross product, when I multiply across, should be equal. So in this proportion, since 2 thirds and 6 ninths are equivalent fractions, the cross product here, 6 and 3, is 18, and the cross product here, 2 and 9, is 18. This will always be true in a proportion that the cross products are equal, which is why we can use cross multiplication to help us solve proportions. These two are called the extremes, and these two are called the means of the proportion. So the cross product of the extremes always equals the cross product of the means. Let's look at why this works. If I have two equivalent fractions, A over B and C over D, remember that B and D cannot equal zero because we can never divide by zero. If I multiply both sides by a common denominator, B times D, as in what's happening in this step, the b's on the bottom here cancel out, and I'm left with a times d here. The d's on here cancel out, and I'm left with b times c here. This shows me why the cross products have to be equal in a proportion. I want to show you some equivalent proportions also. Since you're going to be setting up most of your own proportions, you have to know which ways to set them up, which ways are correct, and which ways would be incorrect to set up proportions. If I have a proportion A over B equals C over D, that's the same thing as if I wrote that proportion upside down, B over A equals D over C. I also can take this proportion, and instead of having A over B, I can have A and B on top, and C and D on bottom here. So it's like taking this proportion and putting it on its side. And of course this one can also be written upside down. So every one of these proportions is equivalent. The way we can tell if our proportions are equivalent or not is if the cross products are always the same. Notice in every one of these examples my cross products are always 755 times 28 and 50 times x. Now, the reason we're talking about ratios and proportions is because we will use those when we're talking about similar polygons. So let's talk about what it means for polygons to be similar. Polygons are similar if all of their corresponding angles are congruent 
and all of their corresponding sides make the same ratio. Notice that this is different than two polygons being congruent, where all their corresponding sides have to be equal. Now their corresponding sides have to make the same ratio. So notice this side, AD is 10, this side, EH, is 5. If I make a ratio of AD to EH, I get 10 to 5, or 2 to 1. This is true for every set of corresponding sides. 5 to 2.5 is 2 to 1, 6 to 3 is 2 to 1, 8 to 4 is 2 to 1 ratio. The similarity symbol is a lot like the congruent symbol, except the equal sign is missing. This helps us to remember how congruence and similarity are different. Again, remember, all the corresponding sides are still equal. That gives them the two polygons the same shape, but they're different sizes, and all of their sides are the same ratio. Remember the congruence statements that we talked about before? The similarity statements work the same way. Corresponding parts must be in the same order. Since angle A is congruent to angle E in these two polygons, a and E must be in the same place. Same with angle B and angle F, angle C and angle G, angle D and angle H. This also shows us the corresponding ratios that are all equal. Side AB and EF are corresponding sides. I can make a ratio out of those. BC and FG are corresponding sides. I can make a ratio out of those. CD and GH are corresponding sides. I can make a ratio out of those. And AD and EH are corresponding sides, and I can make a ratio out of those. Notice, in order for those ratios to be equal, I always have to start with the same polygon on the top and have the other polygon on the bottom. This is how we can make proportions because the side ratios are equal to each other. So this proportion, AB over EF equals BC over FG, is two ratios of corresponding sides. Because the figures are similar, the ratios of corresponding sides must be equal, and we can make a correct proportion. We call that ratio of corresponding sides of two similar polygons the scale factor. When you say what the scale factor of two polygons are, it depends on the order in which I ask you for the, the, po the polygon's scale factor. For example, in this case, if we know that this triangle is similar to this triangle, and I ask you for the scale factor of triangle ABC to triangle XYZ, that means ABC's side must go on top, and the side of XYZ that corresponds to that must go on bottom. So it would be a 6 to 3 ratio, or 2, or 2 to 1, if you want to keep it as a fraction. If I ask for the scale factor of triangle XYZ to ABC, we take a known side of XYZ on, and put that on top, and then take its corresponding side in triangle ABC and put that on bottom. So 3 to 6 or 1 to 2 ratio. Another name for the scale factor is similarity ratio. So I can use either of those words and you should know both of them mean the ratio of the corresponding sides. Okay, the last thing we're going to look at is a perimeter ratio. Rim, the ratio of the perimeters of two similar polygons. So I'm going to get you set up in this activity by showing you how to make polygons in Sketchpad and then how to dilate them. So first we're going to start with the polygon button here. Go ahead and click on that and you can make a convex polygon of any number of sides that you want. To make a polygon, you start 
by putting in the vertices and you keep going around until you've had as many vertices as you want and then you go back to the beginning. So right now I have made a hexagon or a six-sided polygon. Notice that it is highlighted. When it's not highlighted, I don't see that filled in part. Now, the next thing I want you to do is create a point not on your polygon. Keep that point highlighted and under the transform heading choose mark center. That's going to be our center of dilation. Now draw a box around your polygon so everything is highlighted, the interior and all the vertices. And under transform choose dilate. When you do that you get a box that shows you the scale factor. It's going to show you the scale factor of your new polygon to your old polygon. So if I make a scale factor of 1 to 2, the sides of my new polygon will be half the length of the sides of my old polygon. If I chose to make a scale factor of, say, 4 to 3, the sides of my new polygon will be 4 thirds the length of the sides of my old polygon. I'm going to go ahead and go back to a 1 to 2 ratio. Now since I don't want my polygons on top of each other, I'm going to take point G and drag it until they're no longer on top of each other. Now what I want you to do after you have created your two polygons and know your scale factor is I want you to go ahead and measure a pair of corresponding sides and look at the ratios of those by under number choosing calculate and dividing those two. See how the ratio of sides compares to the scale factor. Then I want you to highlight your two polygons, measure the perimeters, and once again see what the ratio of the perimeters is by using the calculator on Sketchpad and compare that to the ratio of the sides and the ratio and the scale factor.